So next we're going to talk about enhanced inventory receiving or EIR as it's commonly referred to. This is a feature that's been around for a little bit. It's one of those features though that once we turn it on, we cannot turn it off. So if we turn this feature on, before we turn it on, we need to make sure that we have a backup with full verification that exists before we turn this feature on. And what this feature will do is typically within QuickBooks, let's pull this up, we'll go to vendors, and we'll say we're receiving items, so we'll create an item receipt. Typically within QuickBooks, whenever we create an item receipt, we'll just throw a few things on here real quick. And we're not going to associate a serial number with it. So typically, whenever we're receiving inventory, we create item receipts if we haven't been billed for it. So we don't, our net terms haven't kicked in. We, we're not expected to pay just yet. And we've created our item receipt. So once we do this, let's say that we are then billed for those items after we receive them. We simply just click the box up here that says bill received. And then it takes that item receipt and it will flip it into a bill. So we don't get to keep the original item receipt. So what EIR will do is EIR will split bills away from item receipts so that they're completely separate transactions. So what this means is whenever we receive an item and we create our item receipt and then we bill off of that item receipt, we still keep our original item receipt and now we're now creating a new transaction with the bill. So we keep the bill and we keep the item receipt. And we can post date this if we want to. So if we come up to edit and preferences and we were to click on EIR, we can see this is exactly the warning that we would get whenever we first turn it on. So again, it splits bills and item receipts away from each other. That way we can see when we actually receive the items and then of course when we were actually billed for them. Currently, if we didn't use this feature, whenever we receive items, whenever we turn that into a bill, turns the item receipt into a bill, so we may not be able to see when we actually receive those items, we can just see when we were billed for them. Again, this is just a high level overview. If, it's, if you feel this is something that would be very beneficial to your company, I highly suggest that you speak with an accounting professional, give us a call, let us take a look, let us make sure that it is the right fit for your company because again, once you turn it on, it can't be turned off. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and, and take a look at some questions. Okay. Can you show how I transfer a serial number item to another warehouse? Yeah, we can show that real quick. So if we go to inventory and we go to transfer inventory, we'll say that we're transferring something from warehouse two to warehouse one. We'll find our items. We'll say how many we're wanting to transfer. And then we can do, we can choose the serial numbers that we're transferring. So these are the two serial numbers that are currently assigned to warehouse two with this item. If we wanted to, we could select them from here or we can come in and we can add multiple serial numbers and then we get a check off drop down box. So we can come through and start checking them off and then we can just select add selected numbers. We can see here, even though I chose the first one, I could choose it again and it re-added it here. This will not hard stop it. It would only give us a warning that we have duplicate serial numbers. So again, this is something to pay attention to whenever we are doing these transfers. Then we could simply add our serial numbers here, save up here at the, the top. Again, it's warning us that we have fewer serial numbers than actual items being transferred. We can hit OK. That just will ignore it. And then we can go ahead and save our transaction. And then it'll go ahead and transfer the five units along with these two serial numbers from warehouse two to warehouse one. And again, if you need any additional help on it, just let us know and we'll be more than happy to give you a little bit more explanation and a little bit more in-depth detail for a one-on-one. -on -one. 
Next question. Do you have to own advanced inventory to turn on EIR? I don't believe so. I believe EIR comes with the standard versions of, of Enterprise. It's just it won't get into that granular reporting into the advanced features of EIR. But I believe you can still turn it on. Can lot numbers or serial numbers be added when the order is picked and not when a sales order is created? No, they have to be created. They have to be added whenever we create the sales order, or we have to leave them blank and then maybe come back in and add them. Um, but it's not really designed to go to the pickers and then have the pickers put in the serial numbers. I see your point though of where it would be much more beneficial if the pickers could do that rather than the uh, the office staff having to do it whenever the sales order is created because they don't know exactly what item is going to be picked. It's a great suggestion though. Why would somebody use advanced inventory? Advanced inventory is for people that need to be able to use and do a lot of different things. It's kind of a broad question because there are so many different types of advanced inventory. Advanced inventory will cover a lot more, but just in the things that we've shown, if we need to be able to track serial numbers for items, if we need to be able to use multiple locations, if we need to be able to scan barcodes, if we need to be able to change our accounting method from first in to first out, all of these features allow that to happen. What is the value to keeping both the item receipt and the bill with the EIR system? So to keep both, a lot of companies like shipping companies and things like that that are constantly like receiving items and then being billed for it at a later time, they need to be able to see when they actually receive that item if they need to go back into the history. And with EIR, it allows people to receive a lot of those shipments to see when they actually receive them because whenever we do a bill, we can't see when we actually got the goods and when we weren't billed for them. EIR lets us see whenever we were, what exactly when we received that inventory and then having it split from the bill sees exactly how long it took for them to bill us. Good question. All right. Can you pull reports with both item receipt dates, details, quantity with the bill entry info on the same screen? Um, I'm not sure if I quite fully understand. I think I have an idea. Um, you might want to clarify just a little bit or feel free to email me at any time. We're going to go ahead and move forward just a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and close this. We do not wish to record. We'll go ahead and bring back our home screen. All right. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next feature. And now we're going to be talking about barcodes a little bit. And with the barcode system currently, it's kind of a point and click as far as just standard barcodes and barcode scanners. There are a plethora of just scanners that will work with the basic barcoding feature. So if we take a look and we come in and we go to edit, preferences, and then company preferences, advanced inventory, and then barcodes, we can select to either enable or disable barcodes specifically from here. Now, if we're turning on barcodes for the very first time, we'll probably want to open up the barcode wizard. So the barcode wizard will ask us, do you currently track barcodes in QuickBooks? Whenever we select the triangle for the dropdown, we can choose from a variety of different issues. So the first one, I do not currently track barcodes in QuickBooks, or we can copy the barcodes from the item name field, so it'll copy the barcode to be the exact same name of the item, or we can get copy barcodes from the MPN or manufacturer's part number, or from the purchase information. Most people like to use their own barcode system or the barcode that is actually with the product, so we would just select the first one of, I don't currently track barcodes in QuickBooks. Then we would select next. The next screen is going to show us, do you want QuickBooks to create a new barcode for you? And what this means is if we don't have barcodes in the system, we can have QuickBooks automatically create specific and customized barcodes for us. So we can do it for all items if we select this, or we can do it for specific items. Maybe we want QuickBooks to create barcodes for us 
and we can choose which items get those barcodes. So we're not going to do any of them. We're just going to go ahead and hit next. And then if we click finish to complete the barcode scanning setup, this is where if we had selected any of these items on the previous screen and we clicked finish, it would go ahead and create those automatic barcodes, those QuickBooks barcodes for those items. So if we hit finish and then OK, and if we close out, whenever we activate the feature, if we take a look at our item list and if we edit one of our items, we can see that we get the barcode number added here. And we can actually, if we have a lot of barcodes, we can actually import the barcode information directly to the items. It's pretty simple, it's not very difficult, and it would save a lot of manual process. If we wanted to do this, we don't have to come into each item, edit it, and then put in the barcode number. We could simply just import the items with the barcode information, and it would automatically fill in this field. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and close out of there. All right, do we have any questions? If for tracking and comparison purposes, having a PO, beginning order, middle receiving, and end bill pay history with the dates listed on the same report possible, 